November 5th Parker Town Council meeting. I'm going to reconvene the meeting at 7 p.m. Before we stand to do the most important part of the evening, I'm gonna ask for two young individuals to come down up front. If there's a young man named Chance and a young lady named Cooper, could you guys come down front, please? <laughs> and this is not a request, this is a demand. Come on down. Ooh. Mayor's privilege. Dun, dun, Mayor's privilege, dun. come on down, you two. <laughs> These two wonderful individuals are Councilman Josh Martin's kids. Oh. Now, they're going to lead us in the most important part of tonight, and that is the Pledge of Allegiance, honoring our nation. So you two, this is how it's gonna work. Oh, you love it, don't even fake, you love it. <laughs> Flag is behind us, don't worry about the people behind you, they're not looking at you, they're, everything's cool. We're gonna turn around, and you guys do this every day, you know how to do it, right? You need to just follow your sister, she'll tell you what to do. <laughs> We're gonna all be quiet, and once you start the pledge, everybody will join in. Okay, sound like a deal? All right, guys, floor is yours. No fighting, no fighting. <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> this is where you go, I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Look at you two superstars, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. paying for that later. <laughs> it's beautiful. I was gonna have the, uh, the, the beautiful Mrs. Martin come down and do it, but I knew she had no qualms about smacking me in the face <laughs> if I asked her to come down, so that's where we went instead. All right, so uh, let's see here. We got a council, if you would, uh, let's go ahead and please sign in. I'm gonna skip that part for you. Oh, and I'm here even though my light didn't turn on. That was my fault. All council members are present. All right, so uh, we've got special presentations tonight. Allison, you wanna come on down? Yes. Good evening. Good evening, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? You know what, if I was any better, it'd be illegal. Well, I'm excited. This is, what, two years in a row now that I get to be here. My name is Allison Kincaid. I'm with the Colorado Parks and Recreation Association. We represent um, over 150 park and rec agencies across the state of Colorado and about 1,300 park and recreation professionals. We have an annual conference of over 500 people in attendance where we recognize the best of the best in the state for parks and recreation. I'm honored here tonight to celebrate that Parker received three awards Ooh. this year, right? Yes. So I'd, I'd like to just take a minute to read a little bit about those three individuals. Well, I'm gonna handle two. I'm gonna hand it off to your staff for the third one. Okay. All right, so the first, can you hear me okay? Oh yeah, you're okay, good. Okay, excellent. Um, I'm, the first one is Kathy Behrens who is involved in our preschool licensing activities and youth section within CPRA. As the director of the Parker Field House camps and after school programs, Kathy brings an unmatched level of expertise and experience to this group of park and recreation professionals and has a positive impact on youth programmers across Colorado. As a chair of the CPRA school age committee, Kathy has shown dedication and passion in providing support for her peers by acting as a subject matter expert on youth programs and licensing updates within the state. She is a key contributor in the organization of CPRA's largest section event, the annual play conference, that's what we call the Miss Play. As the head of the play conference committee, Kathy goes above and beyond in planning relevant trainings that have impacted hundreds of youth program staff throughout Colorado. She effortly effortless effortlessly guides her colleagues in a positive direction and is an asset not only to CPRA and in our opinion to the park and recreation profession as a whole in our state. So please join me in celebrating this outstanding award given to Kathy Behrens. <laughs> Kathy. No, yeah, you gotta no, 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 no. There's no. There's no hiding in the back. If Josh's kids have to come up front, they didn't get an award. You got to come up front. So. Okay. 
Next, please join me in recognizing Denny Jacobs on being awarded the 2018 CTRS of the Year Award. Denny is receiving this award because she's a strong contributor to the therapeutic recreation profession in the state and because of her compassion, innovation, and dedication to the field. During her time with Parker Parks and Recreation, she's been instrumental in the growing success of the therapeutic recreation program. Throughout new and innovative programming, she has successfully increased the number of individuals with disabilities that are participating in your recreation services. Additionally, she has increased partnerships with other agencies such as the Town of Castle Rock and South Suburban Parks and Recreation. Most notably, she was responsible for the successful warm water therapy program for chronic conditions at the Parker Recreation Center, a program that received one of our CPRA awards in 2017 professional service, and the ability to pass along professional knowledge and experience is key in helping to advance in our profession. Denny's service on the TRSC board in recruiting new students to volunteer and intern, ongoing outreach to schools and local groups, along with being featured in local newspaper articles, as well as part of this closing keynote address at our 2017 CPRA annual conference are all strong examples of her contributions to Parks and Recreation and the community. It's my honor to recognize Denny Jacobs. Please join me in giving her a round of applause. He's got the strut. There we go. All right. Now I'd like to pass uh, the microphone over to your own Aaron Kuhn for the next CPRA award. Thank you. All right. So I get the honor of presenting the 2018 Community Champion Award for CPRA. This is an award that's given to a volunteer group or individual for outstanding service to the community, especially as it influences parks and recreation. Um, I have to apologize to Mark because I may have misled him on why he's here today. <laughs> so, and Mark, now he knows. <laughs> we were very honored to uh, present this award at the 2018 CPRA conference in September. And as I understand it, Mr. Martin has a few words he'd like to say. So this is the part where Mark has to sit and listen to me for a moment. I've, Mark, <laughs> you hear some chuckles. We've got some parents in the audience that uh, have also been lucky enough to have Mark uh, work with their kids. In, in a prior existence, I, I ran youth sports programs for about 10 years for Boys and Girls Clubs of America. So I have at least a little bit of a, an insight into what this takes. And uh, seven, eight years ago, my son Chance, who was up here really not wanting to do the Pledge of Allegiance, um, <laughs> got put on a soccer team that, that Mark was the coach of. And I don't, I don't know anything about soccer, as you can tell. I, my body does not lend itself to the soccer field. Um, <laughs> But one of, the, one of the things that I think is always unique about people that choose to work with kids, and, and truly, if you're a volunteer coach, you are choosing to work with, with kids, was the first practice, Mark sat down with all the parents, because as we know, the kids are there to play, and the parents are there sometimes for many different reasons, uh -huh. some of which aren't for an open forum. But uh, the best thing was, Frankly, Mark sat down with the parents and goes, you're here to be parents, you're here to cheer, you're here to yell and cheer for your kids, you will not yell at the referees, you will not yell at the coaching staff, and you will not yell anything at your children other than encouragement. And I had to listen to that same speech every year or twice a year for like eight years now, um, to the point where I think I could probably recite it myself to a certain extent, although I tend to be a little more colorful in my language sometimes than Mark is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. A chuckle from the audience. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> but I just, I, I just really wanted to take a, a, a quick minute um, to, to say thanks to Mark. My son Chance has played for him for a number of years. We have some of the other parents uh, and kids here in the audience that have been able to benefit from all the time that Mark has been willing to put in, and, and it's, uh, it's truly a, a rare thing. So I just wanted to take a minute to say how much uh, I appreciate that. 
Um, I just have a few other things to add to that. Um, I think Mark is the kind of coach that we look for as administration. As like you had mentioned, he emphasizes the recreation philosophy, sportsmanship, fun, learning to play, and creating lifelong athletes. Um, in addition, he is very selfless. He's a servant leader. He asks teams to turn over their coaches' gifts to the town, and they've donated thousands of dollars to the Parker Recreation Scholarship Fund. And it's just that type of selfless action that really makes Mark stand out. I know he's now coaching with Legends, so he's just expanding that outreach to the Parker community, and I think that's what made him so deserving of this award presented by the CPRA. So, Mark, if you want to come up. My son, my son's in student government, and uh, recently he was in a leadership class, and Mayor Wade talked about leadership and speaking, and I was going to use some of the very lessons that he told my son in the speech that apparently I'm not going to deliver. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> a boy. That, uh, I don't have a beard. I've got longer hair. I'm sorry. I've got a bunch of visual aids. I've got humor. <laughs> I'm using my hands. <laughs> Really, um, for a guy that cries at uh, the movie Nemo, <laughs> it's very, very meaningful to me, and I will never forget it, and I will never forget the families that supported me through this journey. You guys are all very, very special, and even though people got sucked into coming to a meeting like this, <laughs> you no know, idea this was happening, I would just encourage you to get involved in Parker Recreation. Aaron and her team just do outstanding works, and you really can make a difference if you just put your heart into it. Thank you very, very much. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is Dirk Richwine, and I'm the chairman of the uh, Commission on the Accreditation of Parks and Recreation Agencies. And the commission was created by the National Recreation and Park Association for the purpose of improving agencies through the development of uh, established standards. These standards were based on best practices uh, by industry experts. There are currently 151 standards. To be accredited, you must meet 37 fundamental standards and 90% of the remaining standards. This, this, uh, this summer, um, Parker went through an accreditation visit and was awarded that accreditation with only missing three standards. So well done. Being accredited puts Parker in the very top of the Parks and Recreation agencies. There are only 172 agencies in the United States that are accredited. In addition to that, when you put that together with multiple gold medal awards that you have won, you now become one of less than 20 agencies in the United States that have had that recognition of achievement. So you are clearly at one of the top agencies in the country for what you're doing and how you're providing services uh, to the members of the community. On a personal note, this one is my favorite one to present uh, because I also live here in Parker and I'm a resident. So I was very happy to see Parker get this and I want to commend you and present this to you and uh, the city. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Jim Cleveland, do you want to go grab that? Yeah. <laughs> Your shining moment. <laughs> Your shining moment. <laughs> Speech. <laughs> All right. Michelle, do we have any other special presentations tonight before we move on? Do you want to ask Jim? Maybe he has another one. No, yeah, any more? Yeah, any more awards that Parks and Rec is going to win tonight? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Right. We're good. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, Parker Chamber of Commerce updates. Mr. Houston. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Look at that. Nobody clears the room wow. like Dennis Houston. Hey. Wow. I knew I'd be good at something. <laughs> 
Mom, who's that guy? You know, as an, as an elected <laughs> Tony official, Tony you Tony always out. get a little twitchy when you walk into uh, chambers and the room is like absolutely full. Yeah. You know? <laughs> For good reason. Yeah. That was funny. Holy moly. All right. Yeah, all Be- the best part is all the kids on my son's soccer team are looking at, your dad is one of those guys? <laughs> <laughs> Or, or All right, yeah. Yeah. If I turn around, is there anybody left? There, there's still you, you got a few. You got a few. You're good. You're good. All right, go ahead, Dennis. Well, good evening, Mayor and Council. A, f- a few updates from the uh, Parker Area Chamber of Commerce uh, since we uh, were together last. Uh, wanted to share uh, uh, a great success we had with our 2018 uh, candidate forum, and uh, we. We certainly packed the uh, the pace center. We had the room set for 150, and I think we uh, we maxed out at about 200. So uh, had a, a lot of very engaged uh, citizens there that night. And so it was it was great to see that type of uh, engagement. I put one of the uh, the cards from that event at your at your place setting uh, for reference. Um, on uh, workforce, a couple uh, good things happening uh, lately. Uh, we hosted our uh, our Jive uh, Youth. Uh, Career Expo for uh, ages 16 through 22, actually. I shouldn't say youth, 16 through 22. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, we had 40 businesses in attendance and uh, 200 attendees and helped connect a lot of uh, younger folks with some uh, job opportunities, not just through the holiday season, but even throughout the school year as well. Uh, this Thursday, we're participating uh, in the annual uh, Career Expo in partnership with Douglas County School District. Uh, 5,500 uh, eighth grade students, as part of their career exploration process, attend this event. Uh, and there will be, I think, between 40 and 50 businesses at that, too. Uh, our focus at that event, not only as a sponsor, but also is uh, just sharing those opportunities that kids have to, to actually start their own business from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Um, on a, uh, on a fun note, uh, it's also a, a flyer at your place setting for our uh, Parker Christmas Market, uh, an inaugural event that's combining a couple current events and uh, adding a few things to that. Uh, the Parker Christmas Market uh, will include uh, our seventh wine walk for the season and also include our uh, sip and shop that's held the la- been held the last two years. It'll take place on Friday, November 30th, that evening from 4 to 9, and Saturday, December 1st from 10 to 6. Uh, we're excited to have a, a large number of the downtown businesses and boutique shops uh, participating with us uh, for that. Uh, the idea is to get people down into the downtown area during the holiday season when you guys have it uh, all decked out uh, with the lights and everything. Uh, the weekend before that, of course, will be the mayor's tree lighting ceremony. This weekend uh, uh, will follow with the uh, Parker Christmas Market, and then the week after that will be the uh, carriage parade. So kind of a one, two, three uh, punch for, to get people downtown. Uh, we're excited to also have about 40 uh, pop-up uh, exhibitors who will be in the downtown area too. Uh, one of the downtown business owners uh, was actually very excited about that and said that they looked at this as a recruiting uh, tool to hopefully uh, have these businesses be exposed to what downtown can be and maybe they would consider opening up a shop downtown and be one of their neighbors. So I thought that was a pretty cool perspective from an existing retailer. Uh, we will have uh, uh, Santa Claus, uh, stationary and also walking around, uh, several groups of Christmas carolers going throughout the downtown area on both of those days and bringing back carriage rides for that weekend. So we'll have carriage rides on Friday evening and, uh, and Saturday during the day as well. Uh, there'll be a lot of sipping and a lot of shopping as part of this, uh, event. Uh, and we're looking forward just, uh, to get people to get out and support the downtown uh, businesses and those other uh, area businesses that have a pop-up uh, exhibit as well. Um, one last thing, and encourage everyone to, if they haven't already, uh, get out and vote. I know I picked up my 10 ballots. I figured there were 10 candidates. I was is, it, is, it a, ballots is it election season? Yeah. Something like I that, yes. Even, I wasn't aware. So, I, so I've been told. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there was a long line as I pulled in here a little while ago. Uh, they were backed out to the street, everyone dropping off their ballots. So Good. It, it is the season. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys may have as well. Council, questions for Dennis? No, I just wanted to commend you. I know how this came together on short notice. I, I look forward to it. I think it's going to be an excellent event, um, something definitely to, to uh, honor Parker. I, I think it's a great job, great job Very with good. the carriage rides. Truly appreciate that um, outstanding job to the, to the council and to the staff. Also, the partnership there, it's just great to get this event 
Done. Very Thank good. Thanks, Amazing. Josh. I'll pass it on to our team. Please they do. get all the credit. Other questions, guys? No? All right. Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going right. to take off and go meet the other parents out in the hallway. So do it. Do it. All right. Next up, we've got Downtown Business Alliance update. All right, Dennis. How many people left when you stood up? Uh, <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know. Yeah, he's I not going to walk out I now that a, you said that. I have that. a complex of all these people left when I was coming up here. I'm just too sensitive. So <laughs> you don't have to stay, Dennis. <laughs> All right, thank you for having me this evening. Uh, always the first Monday of every month. Um, I just have something really fun to talk about for the DBA, and it was a super duper successful chili cook off. Mm -hmm. It was our very first fundraising event, and we pulled it off, quite frankly, in a very short amount of time as well. And we had 416 people purchase tickets which for our first annual, that was pretty impressive. Um, I see a lot of faces that were, were there, so thank you for supporting the chili cook-off. So we had 416 people, so I thank the citizens of Parker for coming, uh, for coming out. Um, fun awards were, there's uh, four awards, three awards, I'm sorry. The best, four awards. Best green chi uh, chili was Jim Asher. Um, he was actually representing the Memphis Mamas and kind of got a little um, <laughs> shy when I introduced him as the Memphis Mamas, but he was stepping in to, uh, for, no for, that, for that team. Um, the best red was a team called the Gallagher's Shameless Cook. Uh, the most creative was a team called Carne Diem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Play on words. And then People's Choice Award was Smoking the Bandit. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lead for that was the general manager of Parker Garage. And he had his whole family there. And the kids were so excited to win the award of People's Choice. So it was super exciting. It was a fun day. Of course, we had the weather on our side. It was beautiful that day. It was like 70 degrees, sunshine. Um, the Broncos weren't playing either, so that was on our side. Oh, so what has we're, changed? We're checking, we're checking some dates uh, uh, next year to have hopefully um, all those stars aligned just like that. But most importantly, I would like to thank all the volunteers that helped. We had a group of people that really just stepped up and helped orchestrate the entire event from Ann Barrington and her husband Jeff that was at the front to Teresa from Vines. Uh, Suzanne from Seven Seas was coordinating all the volunteers. Uh, we had Chris Schnell, uh, our vice vice chair of our DBA. He was organizing so much you know, throughout the whole time, troubleshooting. We had Tony Mango and Jeff Sams that were in charge of setup and, and most importantly, bringing the kegs of beer. I was gonna say, Tony Mango um, had no choice in the matter, right? Yes. I mean, he was. And, um, gosh, we just had so many volunteers. Told. Suzanne's um, husband, Charlie Courtright, was a phenomenal volunteer. Um, I'm sure I'm missing John volunteers Jordan. right now. John, John Jordan. Jordan. Uh, jo oh, John Jordan from yeah, uh, the tailgate. tailgate. I, we could not have pulled this off without John Jordan from the tailgate. So, um, you know, it just took a lot of great people that came together and stepped up, and we all just didn't, you know, we all just put it all together. And to have a big event like that um, at the corner of Pikes Peak and Main Street for our first time and have over 400 people come, it was really exciting. And so we're, we're looking forward to having a second annual uh, chili cook to cook off next year, and we'd like to see that double. We had 25 contestants um, as well for both green chili and, and uh, red chili. And so next year, we're hoping we can double that. We can um, double the amount of attendance. And we just think it's going to be a really fun annual event that our downtown area can look forward to every year. So I just want to thank all the people that came, all the contestants as well that, you know, that cooked all that chili. It was great chili. And then um, all of our great volunteers. So we raised really good money. We were happy with it. Um, we're, we're looking to, you know, forward to raising more money and just so the community knows every dollar we raise will go directly back into downtown uh, into improving improving everything we can downtown so any questions council any questions is terry going to be there again next year to uh <laughs> try and uh, try and get on top there there you go a little more salt huh? <laughs> all right all right cool thank you very much thank you appreciate it
All right, next item up is public comment. This is an opportunity for anyone who's left in the audience who'd like to come talk to council about any item that is not on the agenda. I say that because if you're here to discuss an item that is on the agenda, there'll be public comment at that item's time. So this is for not for items that are not on the currently on the agenda. No action will be taken on them. There's a three minute time limit. If you were to look up above me, you would see there's a th clock that says three minutes. I've got one on the back wall as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and open up public comment at 7.25 p.m. if there's anyone here wishing to address council. Seeing none, but feeling the building shake. Did you hear like the air turn on or something when I said mm -hmm. that? All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close public comment at 7.25 and I'll move on to reports items from mayor and council. Mr. Martin. Um, I think really the only thing, you, know, you and I met with uh, the economic development folks uh, this week over a number of different projects and such, but I, that was really a, about the, uh, the bulk of it. Okay. Amy. Uh, let's see, we had the Greater Parker Foundation meeting today and that's an organization where if you do want to make a contribution to the town and designate those funds, you are able to do that through the town and then also through the Greater Parker Foundation, which is a 501c3. And basically, in the past, it was more kind of focused on art and culture years ago, but if you are interested in making a contribution towards art and culture, the police department, say if you want to do something for our canines, you know, buy a vest or toys or anything like that for the dogs, to bigger and broader things in the police department, and even town events. You can write that check to the Greater Parker Foundation and then designate where you would like those funds to go to in those categories. Is that right? Okay, I have my experts over here. Yeah. <laughs> also, they I weren't giving up you the like, cut yeah. symbol? No, that was, yeah, absolutely. So just, again, wanted to bring that to everyone's attention because it really is a valuable um, source for us and for a lot of the programs that we provide to the citizens. Uh, let's see, we also had a Parker Chamber Board of Directors update and Dennis left. I was going to comment on the fact that one of the uh, committees that Josh Rivero and I sit on is also the Transportation Advisory Council, which we held last week as well. And what I'd like to try and do is maybe get somebody from the Chamber of Commerce to maybe start sitting in on those advisory council meetings in the future. They meet quarterly. I just had my last one, but it's really important because one of the topics we discussed in the Transportation Advisory Council is the need for um, maintaining transportation for our employees, for our restaurants, um, different manufacturing facilities, having a tough time bringing those employees in, and some of those shifts even going late to the night, and some of the employees are having a hard time getting home. So it's kind of nice to maybe combine. Those are issues that we talk about at the chamber. We talk about them in uh, community development, economic development, so many different out, um, lying committees that we're on. And so that would be just one more connection I would like to make is to have the chamber maybe start getting involved in those advisory council meetings. So, mm -hmm. um, and just on that transportation advisory council, that's something that we have Parker staff attend that meeting, two council liaisons currently, Josh Rivero, and again, that was my last meeting. We also have representation from Douglas County and also from RTD. And most importantly, we have several citizens who sit on that advisory council as well. Okay. That's all I have. Josh. <clears throat> um, yes, as uh, Amy said, the transportation meeting uh, was outstanding. Um, some very encouraging things. It's always nice to have RTD in the room and uh, to be able to talk to Brian. And uh, he, he represents his department very, very well and, and, and knows the struggles that we have down in the edge of town, getting, getting transportation down here. Um, very responsive um, and do appreciate him, him coming down. Um, secondly, I met with the uh, Parker Task Force. I have the honor of being the liaison to uh, Mr. Budnick and crew over there. I do just want to pass on, um, uh, coming up on December the 4th is Colorado Gives Day. And we have a habit of giving to the big houses that we know um, no offense to Josh Martin, but Boys and Girls Clubs or United Way or whatnot, there's needs here. There's needs locally. Um, if you can, keep it local. If you don't find an organization such as Task Force or Praying Hands Ranch or something that's local that fits your needs, look for Douglas County. Um, we, we truly appreciate it. There, there's definitely need in Douglas County. So if you get a chance, please, please go check out Colorado Gives and uh, see what organizations match your charitable exercise. Okay. Renee. 
got none. Oh, holy <laughs> cow. That's the first time in four years. I've... It is, I think. All right. <laughs> Debbie. Um, I was in the meeting so with, with the Parker, Greater Parker Foundation with Amy, and they actually let me write a check, so mm -hmm. be afraid. Uh, suckers. Uh, yeah. So uh, we, that, uh, we uh, had, some, had some good discussions and got, got some business that had been outstanding finally taken care of today. Um, I had a meeting with the Douglas County Housing Partnership. We uh, have had two more loans close in this last quarter, and potentially by the end of the year there may be nine, which uh, the second quarter of this year, it didn't look like maybe any more than four may close for the entire year. So that that's there's been some... Bad news for sellers, prices are dropping somewhat. Good news for buyers. John. All right, thank you. Um, I attended a couple of uh, Parker Town Council candidate gatherings. I uh, want to just kind of get a feel for the candidates mm. and uh, see who is potentially going to be up, uh, up with us here in a little over a month. Um, I had a, um, a, a visit with E470 Director Tim Stewart. Uh, just talked general. Um, E-470 toll rate matters, and I attended the IBTTA conference. That is the International Bridge, Tunnel, and Turnpike Association. That's As I party. looked at uh, Council Member Martin. No one parties like the IBTTA does. <laughs> IBTTA, yes. It was uh, as the E-470 board member for Parker. I did that. Uh, I attended uh, my breakout sessions were performance management. Ooh. No shock there. Performance measures. Uh, a ag agency collaboration and uh, autonomous and connected vehicles. So um, attended that. I also accept. I need one of those. You do. You do. I think we all do, Debbie. But um, I also collected an award on behalf of the authority. Uh, it was a tolling excellence in to in tolling. Uh, it was a uh, state agency participation for the temporary license plates, and as most things in government. I get to get all the accolades, whereas other council members, uh, Council Member Martin did a lot of the heavy lifting under his chairmanship, so uh, he should be applauded for it. I just sort of, I just took it and brought it back home. Cool. So kudos to Council Member Martin. All right. I, Amy, I hear you got a couple more things you forgot. Yeah, I'm, I'm making up for Renee this evening, I guess. Oh. So, um, one other thing on transportation, most of you have seen the uh, Colin Ride buses around town, the little green buses that are in that kind of five mile radius perimeter. I just want to let you all know sometime, I believe next year, they'll be changing the look of that Colin Ride. So, we still will maintain that service, one that RTD has threatened to cut many times <laughs> over the eight years that I've been sitting here. We've been able to maintain it. Currently, we're averaging about three out, uh, three riders per hour, which is okay. We'd like to see a couple more people join. But um, in the future, you will see a completely different bus that'll be, I think, white is what they showed us with maybe in red, and they'll say Flex Ride. So I just want to let everyone know Flex Ride is the same service as Call and Ride when you do see those changes coming up here in the future. And then also um, on behalf of community development, which... Councilman Rivero and I also serve as liaisons, too. <laughs> uh, they are asking the community to join them for an open house uh, here on November 7th, and will be held at the schoolhouse building. And that's just an update on the Parker 2035 master plan. And so if you have questions, you can go in there, see what they have as far as information. And again, that's just an update at the schoolhouse right here on Main Street, 5 to 7 p.m. November 7th. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Welcome. So for me, the only couple things, well, I've, the only couple things just to mention today, last week I got to speak at Sagewood Middle School with their seventh and eighth grade government class. It, it did, as was mentioned earlier, it turned less of government and more into public speaking. And uh, it was great. Probably in the 10 years I've been speaking at schools around Parker and Douglas County, that was by far one of the best classes I've been able to speak at. The kids were highly engaged, great questions. It was a wonderful time. And then today, Councilman Rivero and I and staff, uh, Chief King and Michelle Kivala, our town administrator, hosted, what, 4,000 third graders, <laughs> something like that, um, here from Frontier Valley. 
Um, every so often throughout the through every year, we'll have a couple different schools who will come here on a field trip. So we got to talk to them about their role in government, what their town does. It's always a great opportunity to talk to the kids, to give them information about their community, show them how powerful they are and how they can have a demonstrable effect on our future. So good, good. Um, Oh, and yes, and we did, Josh and I also did uh, Sagewood's career day last week as well, uh, which is always fun. I think it was my eighth career day. Was that your first one? First. First one. Always a good time. Always a good time. All right. So with that, we're going to go ahead and move on to our consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine and will be enacted with one motion and one vote unless a council member asks to have something removed for further discussion. So with that, council, I would uh, entertain a motion for consent agenda items 7A through 7J. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Amy and a second from Renee. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item number eight. These are our public hearings. First one we have up is, uh, let's see here, this is a public hearing for ordinance number 1.523 on first reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to adopt the 2019 budget and to make appropriations for the same. Uh, while Mary Lou is coming down, for those watching on Facebook Live or those in the room who've never been to a council meeting before, uh, you rarely will see items on first reading have an actual public hearing like this or an opportunity. Um, as you guys know, any members sitting up here on council cannot do anything in a vacuum. Everything has to be in the public domain. So they can't discuss an item, a law, an ordinance that's coming down the books until it's been brought into public domain. And that is usually with first reading. So usually first readings happen on consent agenda to bring it in but since this is budget stuff and budget is really 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 important and we absolutely love Mary Lou we always tend to have this first reading as an actual you know opportunity and hearing this will be followed up on a second reading which would be when um, things when the magic really happens so with that Mary Lou all right thank you mayor and council um, I just know when we get done, you know, with that kind of introduction, it's all going to be full back here. See? Yeah, people, they're going to come back in. People watching at home, get in your cars. Drive down. <laughs> Don't speed, but drive on down. That's down. right. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to talk about the 2019 Town of Parker budget this evening. It's a little bit shortened version of a lot of information that you've seen already since we've had the opportunity to talk about it several times. So with the next slide, we have um, the date that we have met and will be meeting. So the first reading, as the mayor mentioned, is tonight. The second reading will be on the 26th, which is the continuation of the meeting from the 19th. We have, leading up to that, had a study session or a um, budget retreat in September, and then a study session in October. One of the more important dates is one that we're required to meet by the state, and that was the October 15th deadline to um, submit the budget to council for their review, and that did happen on the 12th. With that, let's get into a little bit of a review of the general fund. Um, this is a very shortened version of the financials for the general fund. I want to start out this evening looking at our 2018 projections because that gives us a basis for where we are this year and where we're going. It has been a very challenging year, um, as you all are very aware, and we've come forward to council for two formal reductions to our budget. But with our projections, we are looking like we are in a very good place. I'm going to start at the bottom instead of at the top, because that is one of the most important numbers to one of the council members, the ending cash. And our ending cash is projected to be just a little over $16 million in 2018. More important than that, that is a 31% um, reflection of the total expenses that are in our general fund. So we are above the 25% yeah. um, guidance that council provided to us last year. So we are in very good shape from a cash perspective. Now with that, I'm gonna back up to the top. With our revenue, for 2018, we are looking at a 1.2% increase. That is on the revenue line itself. Our transfers in actually increased in 2018 over the 17, primarily due to one of the adjustments that we did for our budget adjustments. On the operating side, we're looking at a 4.1% increase year over year. 
On a total basis, though, that comes down to a 1.9% increase. We were able to reduce some of the transfers out, primarily to the cultural fund, again, as part of our budget reductions. So I think that kind of grounds us in where we are in 2018. And just to make sure I didn't miss any important points, I think we talked about the growth in revenue. Sales tax um, is projected to grow at 1.8%. We are currently with um, the month of October uh, sitting at a 3.25% increase on a year-to-date basis. So we stayed pretty flat with the prior month. Our projected expenditures are actually coming in under our amended budget by 800,000, so that's good news also. And again, our ending cash is in a very good place. So if I touch base on just a couple of the other two major funds um, within the town, the first one is Parks and Rec. Within that fund in 2018, we're looking at about a million dollars less in contributions. They had just about a million dollars just under that come in during 2017. Our 2018 projection is just about zero. So um, that accounts for a lot of that uh, change or all of that change. In addition, uh, capital was increased in 2018 versus 17. Uh, that was for the Harvey Open Space project, and most of that money will be carried over into 2019. Within the cultural fund, we have a decline in our transfers, and that was due to a lot of the work associated with the schoolhouse renovation being completed. So we're seeing our capital there um, come down. The transfers in 2017 into the cultural fund were 4.3 million. Our projection for 2018 is 2.1 million. So now if we go back to that same slide and we focus on our 2019 budget numbers. Again, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to start at the bottom. We have an ending cash of $15.3 million. That equates to a 29.2% um, comparison of cash to our total expenditures. So again, in a very good place. We are pulling our cash down. So the guidance that came from council was 25% of our total general fund expenditures. Um, and so we are using, which is um, the typical um, good practice, that our cash balance funding funds are being used for one-time items. So in our 2019 budget, our cash balance is coming down by about a million dollars. We have 500,000, just a little over, in our general fund capital expenditures. And then that cash is also funding part of the transfer to cultural, where we have another uh, $700,000 of capital. So again, bouncing back up to the top, our revenue here in 2019 compared to 2018 is flat. We are anticipating that our sales tax growth rate on a full year basis next year will be 0%. So that's what is driving our flat revenue um, picture for 2019. On the operating expense side, we have a 4.1% increase again. Uh, that is being driven by our salaries and wages and also our benefits. And we'll get into both of those just a little bit later. Our capital requests declined considerably for 2019. You can see that decline from the 2.7 down to just half a million. And our transfers out have stayed about the same. We have about 1.7 million that's going to cultural in both of those years and another 700,000 that goes to our debt service fund. And with that, we'll make sure I hit on all of the important points. Our revenue, again, is flat with 2018. Our sales tax will make up 35 million of that 51 million. And two of our other um, large categories, they look small in comparison, but they're large, um, are our building permits and our property taxes. Building permits are projected to be flat next year. Um, and on our property taxes, 2018 was a year where we saw a huge increase, and that's because the assessment took place and we had the benefit then of that increased um, assessment value 
and so we had a much larger growth in our property taxes this year. Next year is an off year, so we see our property taxes stay basically flat. We have budgeted a 2% increase because there is always some increase in that assessed value. Some additional highlights in the general fund on the expenditure side. We are um, looking at a reduction in our 2019 expenditures of about $200,000 as compared to 2018. That to me is incredible given the work that we did on our 2018 numbers and so to be bringing that down just a little bit more is amazing. Um, most of our activity on the expense side then is within personnel. So the first item there is our FTE counts are staying um, almost flat with this year. We are going to increase by one, and I doubt that there's been many other years in the history of the town where we've had just one increase in our FTE. The funding for that position is coming from a transfer from one of our other funds, the Stormwater Fund, and actually that transfer is going to more than fund that position. One of the goals with the 2019 budget was to continue that strong commitment to our employees. We have been able to fund an average pay for performance rate of 3.5%. We will also be funding the step and the range increases that in occur within the police department. And then healthcare. It just doesn't seem to change from year to year. We are looking at an 18% increase in our health care in 2019 over 2018. Our employees on average will carry 4.5% of that. The increase is really driven um, this year by some very high claims that we had um, on the part of our employees and their family members. Uh, we are pleased though that our employees, the um, additional cost to the employees is averaging just that 4.5%. We are making two changes. There are no changes to the plan. Premiums are going up and we've made two changes. One that will add a premium to the employee only category of our health care. So that um, premium is going to be $50 per month instead of zero. And the other change that is being made is mm -hmm. We have employees who have elected to not participate in the town's health care plan, and those employees in the past received a $1,000 uh, incentive for that, and that is being eliminated in 2019. The next slide I just wanted to highlight again because I think it's such positive news where we can control our discretionary expenses. We have been very proactive in doing so over the last two years, or during 2018, and with the budget for 2019. You can see how those amounts have gone down from 12.3 million down to 11.6. Then, fo <clears throat> excuse me, focusing on the other two funds, primary funds within the town, Parks and Rec is uh, budgeting 900,000 900, less in their capital projects. Capital projects will be coming down from 10.2 down to 9.2. The cultural fund operating revenue is increasing just under 3%. And continuing the trend that we saw in 2018, the capital expenditures are also decreasing as the schoolhouse renovation is totally wrapping up now in 2018. The next one is your eye chart test. So we're gonna see if you pass it. So <laughs> the mayor puts on his glasses. Really what I wanted to uh, point out here is just the extent to which we do commit funds to our capital infrastructure within the town. We are spending over $13.5 million on infrastructure. That does include machinery and equipment, our computers, um, building and improvements, our motor vehicles, etc. So if we kind of go um, fund by fund, the general fund is sitting at about $500,000 with one of the major uh, purchases planned to be a GIS asset management system. Within Parks and Rec, the $3.6 million is primarily made up of work on the High Plains Trail and also the O'Brien Park Playground. 700,000 in the cultural fund is related to parking lot 
work that will start to begin there and also some roof repairs that are going to take place. The recreation fund is related to the H2 O'Brien uh, pool renovation that will take place. We're going to save capital improvements for the next page. Stormwater Utility Fund is primarily focused on some improvements, Cherry Creek improvements at the KOA, and then they are also going to be doing some work on the schoolhouse parking lot uh, with drainage. Fleet Services is the value of the replacement of vehicles, and this is just replacement of vehicles. This is not any additional new um, vehicles to the fleet. We don't have any of those this year. The Facility Services Fund, the $58,000, is there um, for town-wide building automa automation standardization. And the IT fund, that was a mouthful, the IT fund is um, looking at some additional computer equipment. So with that, we'll get away from the eye chart and go to something that's easier to read and focus on just the um, high-level projects that are within our Capital Improvements Fund. So we've spent some time in our previous meetings talking about these. Um, I'm not going to go through them one by one, but um, I think it's important to see the value that we do put into some of our major projects around here. Next year we have three projects that are all over that million dollar level. And then we do spend a lot of time talking about interfund transfers and just to capture all of those so that we have a summary of them and where they come from and go to. That's the purpose of this slide. So you can see the different transfers that take place from funds to funds and the explanations and purposes for those. With that, I'm going to stop and see if there are any questions. Council, questions? No? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so, uh, all right, with that, it's, uh, we're going to go ahead and open it up for public comment at 7.51 p.m. if there's anyone here to address council on the first reading of our budget. Seeing none, we'll close public comment at 7.51 p.m., and I will entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 1.523 on first reading and to schedule second reading and public hearing for November the 26th, 2018. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by John. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item number nine. This is resolution number 18-078, a resolution to adopt the Town of Parker Complete Streets Policy. Mm. Yeah. I suppose to. Yes. <laughs> Come on down. Are you going to do it from the side over there? Okay, that's fine. You're good. Changing of the guards. Got to get the computer flipped around. You can go through the budget presentation again if you want. <laughs> Randy's going to do that when he comes up. That's all he's going to do. <laughs> we need some like background music. There you, there you go. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you and good evening, Mayor and Council members. Good evening. Again, this is the public hearing for the Complete Streets Policy. According to Hush. the National Complete Streets Coalition, complete streets are defined as streets for everyone. They're streets designed and operated to enable safe access for all users, regardless of age, ability, or mode of transportation. Why complete streets for Parker? Adoption of this policy uh, supports, promotes, and implements important transportation policies guiding principles, goals, and strategies of the Parker 2035 Master Plan, the Main Street Master Plan, the Parker Transportation Master Plan, as well as promotes the town's strategic goals. The Complete Streets approach has been around since the early 2000s, and there are over 1,400 adopted Complete Streets policies in the United States, including some Colorado communities. According to the National Complete Streets Coalition research, potential benefits include those that you see on the screen. Health, uh, walkable and bikeable neighborhoods support increased physical activity and mode choice. Mobility, 
Complete streets projects encourage multimodal travel and usually result in more biking, walking, and transit trips. Safety. According to a Federal Highway Administration review, streets designed with pedestrians in mind, those with sidewalks, crossing islands, better bus stop placement, maybe some traffic calming measures, and treatments for travelers with disabilities improve pedestrian safety. Importance to economic development. Complete streets projects are typically supportive of increased employment, <laughs> net new businesses, higher property values, and new private investment. Uh, another benefit cost, many treatments uh, such as changing pedestrian signal timing, uh, adding uh, countdown clocks, adding bulb outs at the curbs, things that you see in our downtown, uh, those things can improve the transportation network capacity and efficiency for little or no cost. And then finally, congestion. Complete streets improvements can reduce congestion and improve travel times by providing alternative transportation choices, such as walking, biking, and transit. So complete streets are safe for all users, uh, but is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Rather, complete streets recognizes that each street is unique, should respond to community context, and therefore may require different treatments. So while a complete street in a rural area may look quite different than one in an urban area, both are designed to balance um, safety, mobility, and convenience for everyone using the road. And that illustration on your screen just shows some elements of complete streets. Sidewalks, trails, bike lanes, things like that. Parker streets make up 15% of the land area and are a vital part of our um, viable and active community. And our streets serve multiple functions like they do everywhere, access, multimodal mobility, economic development, public gathering spaces. Uh, they're there to support public safety and also they help create our community character. They emphasize safety and comfortability in design and operation and are part of a multimodal transportation network and are context sensitive to the surrounding environment. So the town's uh, roadway design criteria manual from the public works engineering side of things already includes many complete streets elements, such as sidewalks and bike lanes. Adopting a complete streets policy will formalize and strengthen the town's commitment to continue planning, designing, and operating our roadways to ensure um, safe and equal access for all users. Additionally, this policy will provide guidance for implementation of Complete Streets best practices. Community development staff worked collaborati collaboratively. It's getting late. <laughs> <laughs> You're more than welcome to stay to the end after our agenda is done, too, well, if you want. I, <laughs> We were just talking about staying late, just to listen to Randy. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we worked with our colleagues in engineering, Parks and Rec, PD, and um, our transportation consultant, Michael Baker International, uh, helped us through this process as well. Development of the policy was informed by review of other complete streets policies, including national, state, and uh, local communities. And uh, we were also assisted by the document you see on the screen, the elements of a complete streets policy. Uh, that's an industry standard publication by the Complete Streets Coalition. So that was very helpful to us. The coalition promotes the development and implementation of complete streets policies and professional practices. Goals of the policy are threefold. They incorporate complete streets best practices in order to balance the needs of all users in the uh, transportation network, to create a safe and efficient multimodal system that includes, uh, of course, measurable performance standards. And lastly, the policy recommends 11 strategies for implementation of the, of the policy. 
The document to be adopted is the policy, which includes uh, vision and commitment, exceptions, implementation strategies, and evaluation metrics. The process also generated a document we call our supporting documents uh, that provides just supplemental information, um, research and information that informed our policy. At their October 25th regular meeting, Planning Commission voted unanimously to recommend that Town Council approve Resolution 18-078. With that, staff recommends uh, Town Council approve Resolution 18-078 to adopt the Parker Complete Streets policy. And that concludes staff's presentation and Carolyn and I are here to answer any questions you might have. Excellent, thank you very much. You're Council, welcome. do you have any questions for Mary or Carolyn? <coughs> no? no? Okay, we'll open it up at 7.59 p.m. for public comment if there's anyone here to address Council on this policy. Mm, seeing none, we'll close public comment at 8 p.m. and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve resolution number 18-078. Second. Motion by Amy and a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item 10A. This is uh, ordinance number 5.81 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend Title III of the Parker Municipal Code authorizing the, the municipal court to maintain a supervision office through the court clerk's office. Judge Seidel, so, this is blue shirt, red tie day if you're an attorney or a judge or anything like this. Right. What are you wearing? What, what are you, I guess if you're, if she's not wearing her, her blue shirt, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have any other judge or judges or attorneys in the room? No? All right. I'm wearing a blue shirt. I'm halfway to being a judge, I guess. Oh, oh. Judge Seidel. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Thank you very much for... Uh, for having uh, Sue Ratcliffe was not able to be here tonight, a family matter came up, so I'm doing my best to, uh, to stand uh, here for both of us. When we discussed the supervision services concept at uh, the study session, um, we went through, I think, a number of the explanations just to repeat briefly. The concept here is to provide supervision to at-risk uh, youth and adult uh, defendants in the Parker Court who would benefit from active supervision by uh, court staff to make sure that they are complying with requirements for uh, classes, evaluations, community service. Uh, the goal is to provide services to those who are mo most likely to reoffend or to become a uh, more of a danger to the community um, and, and try to prevent those individuals from becoming more of a burden uh, to the town. Uh, supervision will further the goals of rehabilitation and community uh, safety. The scope, as we discussed, is to start primarily with juveniles to monitor and supervise uh, the, the, the higher level, if you will, uh, or more at-risk juveniles who come before the court, make sure that they go through appropriate evaluations for alcohol substance abuse, that they're getting the treatment that's required uh, through either a plea bargain or from a sentence that I might impose and to make sure that those individuals uh, stay on track. Um, the, those being supervised will enter into supervision either through a plea bargain with the town attorney or if they plead guilty and there's a conviction if I impose a condition of sentence that would include uh, treatment requirements, evaluations, other conditions that could and should be uh, supervised uh, through court staff. Uh, fees is a different scale depending on the length of supervision. For an adult, uh, up to six months, $150 would be charged. A juvenile would be at $100 for up to six months. More than six months for an adult, $200 and $150 for uh, juveniles for up to, uh, for more than six months, up to one year. Um, when we talked at the study session, we had mentioned two young individuals who were examples of who could benefit from supervision services. They both happened to be 16-year-old young women uh, who were uh, present before the court on drug offenses. And good news to report to you is that they both have come back to the court in the meantime since we talked at the study session. 
Um, both had gone through an evaluation process and were on their way to, uh, through treatment uh, and were complying with the recommendations. They also provided a perfect example of why supervision services would be useful because we had to actually contact each family to bring them back to court mm -hmm. because the evaluation process did not automatically or easily send information back to us that the evaluations had been completed. So after the 30 days that I had provided to them were up for the evaluations, we didn't have them in the file. We had to recontact the families, ask them to appear just so we could find out where they stood because we, we weren't going to lose track of them. The supervision process would provide that sort of, of um, oversight so that we wouldn't have to bring the families back. We wouldn't be taking up court time. We wouldn't be imposing uh, on the parents and the child. The supervisory person would know where they stand, would have that information, and it would have eliminated uh, that, that entire uh, second appearance. So good news that they're on their way. Just another reminder of how supervision could have been helpful um, in that uh, situation. Um, so that, that's our summary. Any questions, be happy to answer. Council, any questions for the judge? I know we've talked about this already. You know? yeah. I, I missed the study session, but I've, obviously I, I, I do appreciate it. I know our police force is, is all about community policing, and, and Judge Seidel, I, I like to refer to you as the community judge. Um, you take the opportunity to educate before you take the opportunity to punish, and I, I believe that this is a, a chance to get those offenders in front of you again and, and a chance for you to help them out and guide them on their way before they spend more time in the system. So kudos to you and kudos to your court staff for, for looking into this. Thank you. We, we certainly believe that the vast majority of people who come to the court are good people who have made a mistake and to approach their cases that way is our priority. Okay. John. How does it feel to be on that side of the bench? <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just itching to use yeah. this gavel too, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> We just want to know. I was, I was walk, yeah. As I was walking up, I was thinking that I might have to say that I don't particularly care for this side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then it proved itself because we, now I had to speak to you from here and not being familiar, I completely forgot not to make bad. that. Uh, not too bad. I just wanted to yell like out of order and start banging it, you know, contempt. But it just doesn't, doesn't fly. So. Uh, you know, for, for, could I take a book is the question. Could you take a book? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other questions, guys? None? Thank you very much, Judge. Thank we'll go you. ahead and open it up for public comment at 8.06 p.m. if there's anyone here to address council on Ordinance 5.81. Okay, seeing none, we'll close public comment at 8.06, and I'll entertain further discussion or a motion, please. Move to approve Ordinance 5.81 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh, second by Renee. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Before we, get, before we get to our next 11 items, <laughs> which are all going to be in one presentation, I'm just going to warn everyone who's watching on Facebook Live and anyone who's left in the room. If you have a medical condition <laughs> where my voice drives you crazy, go ahead and stick your fingers in your ears now or mute I'm your gonna, computer no. because I have to read these 11, I, even though we have one presentation. Mm -hmm. I have to read these 11 items in, and you're going to hear a lot of my voice. So I was going to ask you guys what kind of voice you wanted me to read them in at, but I know these people would get up and walk out if, if I did. So he's just putting his earbuds in. Can you do it in an accent? And, and what just kind of each, accent do you want? I don't know. Each? Like a different one? Like That's not one. helping. Like, like a, tour, a tour around the world? You know? I can do a little southern, you know? Okay, no, we'll just Try do it. these right now. Oh, no. I, can do, uh, I can do the radio voice. This is ordinance number. No, okay, so the next 11 items, again, I'm going to apologize. I've got to read these in. We are here. <laughs> this is 10B, ordinance number 4.895 on second reading. Oh. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 11.01.030, 11.01.060, <laughs> And 11.01.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Administra Administrative Code. Item C is ordinance number 4.91.6 on second reading. I warned you guys. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 11.02020, 11.02.050, 11.02.060, and 11.02.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Residential Code for one and two family dwellings.
dwelling building code. D, ordinance number 4.92.5, as everyone walks out the door while I'm reading these on second reading, this is a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 11.03.020, 11.03.050, 11.03.060, and 11.03.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Building Code. E, Ordinance number 4.93.5 on second reading, a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 11.04.020, 11.04.050, 11.04.060, and 11.04.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Fire Protection Code. F, ordinance number 4.94.4 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 11.06.020, 11.06.050, 11.06.060, and 11.06.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Mechanical Code. <laughs> Item G, hold on your horses, guys. I'm not even halfway there yet. <laughs> ordinance number 4.95.4 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 11.07.020, 11.07.050, 11.07.060, and 11.07.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Plumbing Code. Item number H, ordinance number 4.96.4 on second reading. John, you know what? This is a bill for an ordinance. It's to amend sections 11.14.020, 11.14.050, 11.14.060, and 11.14.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Energy Code. Mm. I, ordinance number 4.97.4 on second reading. I know it stinks, guys. I'm sorry. A bill for ordinance to amend sections 11.15.020, 11.15.050, 11.15.060, and 11.15.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Fuel Gas Code. J, ordinance number 4.101.5 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend section 11.16.010, 11.16.050, 11.16.060, and 11.16.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Property Maintenance Code. Item K, ordinance number 4.105.2 on second reading. Bill for an ordinance to amend sections 11.08.020, 11.08.050, 11.08.060, 11.08 and 11.08.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Existing Building Code. Last but not least, Debbie, I'll do this one for you nice and slow. Ordinance number 4.106.2. And it's on second reading, yeah. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend sections 11.09020. Oh, yeah, 11.09.050, 11.09.060. And in case you were wondering, 11.09.080 of the Parker Municipal Code concerning the Parker Swimming Pool and Spa Code. All right. Hey, Amy has some more <laughs> for you. Bring me. Randy. Yeah, in right. case anyone's wondering, Josh Martin and I have one month, 11 days. Uh, <laughs> two hours, I think. Uh, oh, don't yeah. stop. Don't stop. You know what? There is someone. There is someone on Facebook Live or someone in this yeah. room who enjoys my voice who just enjoyed that. Yeah. I have to believe it. So Your wife. We Mrs. Have Wade, <laughs> Mrs. Wade just dropped yeah. off of the Facebook Live feed. And we have three employees. Not only did, did the... the did people in the audience leave? We had one employee leave. Actually leave with that. Okay. Yes. Randy, you enjoyed it. I know you did. I did enjoy it. Thank All you right. very much. Randy, go ahead and that. lead us through that. All right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I appreciate the introduction and the reading of all those ordinances. I do have one correction on oh. item. Do I have to read them all again? Nope. All right. On you. item 10J, ordinance uh, 4.101.5. There was an error in one of the amendments, uh, the, a bill for ordinance to amend sections 11.16.010 was incorrect. It should be 11.16020, along with the remaining section being correct. Section 1 will be reading as section 
2.020 for the Parker Municipal Code is amended as to read as follows. Excuse me. Is the International Property Maintenance Code. Pursuant to Section 7.7, .7, the Town of Parker Home Rule Chapter, the International Property Maintenance Code 2018 edition, as published by the International Code Council at 500 West Jersey Avenue, Northwest 6th Floor, Washington, D.C., uh, 20,001, is adopted by reference and in, incorporated into this chapter as, through, as though uh, fully set forth herein, except as otherwise provided hereafter. Such code is adopted in full, including the outline and contents in text and appendages contained herein. The remaining order the, of the ordinance stays the same and is mainly being adopted at this time to make it concurrent with all the other codes uh, for the adoption of the year of 2018. Gotcha. That was the only correction we had to make there for a record. Here within, here too? Yeah. All right. Good. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry. I just throwing some, some legal jargon out there, you know, okay. just trying to impress you all. Left. Right. Right. Yeah, the judge left, whereas <laughs> here into, here thou. <laughs> All right. So the Town of Parker Building Division adopts the international codes every three years. Uh, this is the sixth time since 2004. The codes are performance oriented to stimulate economic development through acceptance and innovative design and construction methods. And it encourages new building materials and new construction technologies. During the last 12 months, staff has worked diligently uh, on the 2018 international codes and have reached out to many production home builders, the HBA, along with South Metro Fire Rescue via meetings, phone calls, and emails to discuss the current amendments and along with any other new proposed amendments. The support we have received from the HBA and South Metro has come with no concerns to adopting the 2018 codes. The HBA is in full support of the adoption of 2018 IRC and as directed by council, the removal of section R13, uh, yeah, 313 automatic fire sprinkler systems will remain as a currently adopted in the 2015 as well. With collaboration with the South Metro Fire Rescue, amendments to the IFC have been discussed to stay consistent with the surrounding jurisdictions. Many of the amendments from the 15 to the 18 International Fire Code has came as a result of the code actually putting those amendments into the body of the text. So there has been fewer amendments to the IFC. Currently, the town is under the 2015 International Codes and is looking to adopt the 18 codes. Uh, there are minor changes between the two code editions, but with approval from council tonight, this will make the town of Parker a leader in the 2018 adoption in the Douglas County area. And all in all, after all the reading you did, I would mm. like to say staff does recommend approval for these ordinances, items 10B through 10L, related to the building codes. I thank you for your time, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Council, do you have any questions for Randy? Would you like us to go over those codes one more time? Those one? <laughs> huh? no. No? All right. Thank you very much, Randy. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Since this is a public hearing, let's go ahead and open up that public comment at 8.17 p.m. And you get a cookie if you can recite back any of those code ordinance numbers in order. We don't have a cookie. We don't, we don't, have, a, we don't have any cookies we up here. No so. All right. So, yeah, I can go get you a cannoli out of the back or something like that. I don't know. You can... <laughs> Yeah, I can give you a Chamber of Commerce thing if you, okay. All right, I'm not seeing any movement, so we're gonna go ahead and close public comment at 8.17 p.m. Here's the funny joke, council thought it was great, but they have to read and make the motions for every single one of these. And about this time, usually some of the candidates who are in the audience are like, I'm out, this is stupid, and just like leave, because they don't wanna do this anymore. But, all right, so with that, I'll entertain further discussion or motions on items 10B through 10L. I move to approve four point, ordinance number 4.89.5 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh, second by Amy. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Move to approve ordinance 4.91.6 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh, second by Renee. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. I move to approve ordinance number 4.92.5 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh, second by Debbie. Council, please vote. 
Motion passes unanimously. I move to approve ordinance number 4.93.5 on second reading. Second. Motion by Renee, second by Amy. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item. Hey, Johnny. Huh? I move to approve ordinance 4.94.4 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh, second by Amy. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item. I move to approve ordinance number 4.95.4 on second reading. Second. Motion by John, second by Josh. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item. I move to approve ordinance 4.96.4 on second reading. Second. Motion by Debbie, second by Renee. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item. I move to approve ordinance number 4.97.4 .4 on second reading. Second. second. Motion by Amy, second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Now please remember that item J, ordinance number 4.101.5, the motion would need to include as uh, with changes, as no changes and corrections as noted at the presentation. So moved. Second. Motion by Josh, second by, who second? Debbie, Debbie did? I did. Debbie. Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item. I move to approve ordinance number 4.105.2 on second reading. Second. Motion by Josh, second by Renee. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And then the last item there. I I'm move to approve ordinance number 4.106.2 on second reading. Second. Motion by Amy, second by Renee. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item number 11. This is the Stroh Road Widening Project. And guess what? This one has one, two, three, four, five <laughs> resolutions in it. You know, you couldn't keep up with the other ones. So like we just had, there will be one presentation. But this is your time, Terry, to put your fingers in your ears. You don't have to listen to my voice if you don't want to. Or just turn the hearing aids down. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Tom, you should have he done took it. He just, he just took his hearing aids <laughs> out of his ear. No, he, tuned, he tuned you out about 45 minutes yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. All right. So bear with me, folks. Here we go. This is the Stroh Road Widening Project. Number one is resolution number 18-079. This is a resolution accepting the conveyance of a temporary construction easement from Parker Water and Sanitation District for Stroh Road. Item two is resolution number 18-080. Resolution accepting the conveyance of real property from Parker Water and Sanitation District for Stroh Road. Item number three, resolution number 18-081. A resolution accepting the conveyance of a traffic signal easement from Parker Water and Sanitation District for Stroh Road. Number four is resolution number 18-082, which is a resolution accepting the conveyance of real property from Parker Water and Sanitation District slope easement for Stroh Road. And yes, that is item number five, ordinance number 1.520 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance conveying a 50-foot wide non-exclusive easement to Parker Water and Sanitation District for water and sewer lines to be located in Stroh Road. Tom. Thank you for that I was gonna say, wonderful Chris, introduction. Chris you, Chris, you look a little bit shorter. <laughs> well, listen. Because Hudson's it's, on here. It's five inches. He'll say seven, but I'm saying five. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Randy? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. This evening in front of you are five items related to right-of-way and easements that we need to widen Stroh Road in the future. Um, there's a segment of Stroh Road between J. Morgan Boulevard and Motzenbacher Road, which is a half section. We have plans within the next five years to widen that section of Stroh Road, and it's gonna be driven primarily by development in the hess Stroh Anthology area to the west of Motzenbacher Road. But we need to get the easements and the right-of-way in order to build it, so that's what's in front of you this evening. Um, Parker Water and Sanitation District, they own a piece of property just south of the Stroh Soccer Park west of Cherry Creek and about 400 feet to the east of Motzenbacher Road. And as part of an easement exchange between the town and Parker Water, as part of their water resource centralization project, they've agreed to dedicate the right-of-way and the easements we need to build the section of Stroh Road adjacent to their property. Um, because they have um, facilities, water lines, and sewer lines that they have within the right-of-way they're gonna be dedicating to us, 
The last item on the agenda this evening is an, a ordinance to dedicate easements back to them for that existing infrastructure. And so with that, um, I recommend approval of the resolutions and ordinance, and I'll take any questions. Thank you very much. Council, questions? Easements? <clears throat> Water and sand? No? All right, let's go ahead and open that up for public comment, 824 p.m., if anyone wishes to address council on this item. I mean, I see some faces in the audience that we normally don't see, and you guys, like, sat through the whole thing just to hear us talk. <laughs> like, no public comment. Hey, what I what mean, bet did you lose to her? I was going to say. There's been a lot of laughter. There's been I'm laughter, but so. I'm, I know I'm like, come on. We heard you were really entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no wrong. refunds. <laughs> no <laughs> refunds. Oh, man. I should have pulled out the voices in the oh, singing. Oh, no. Then, no. You know, no. Say, no. That just means you have to come back. I still have two more years in office unless they kick me. You're, you're back? <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> baby. Yes. Don't, don't encourage I think they're talent agents, Mike. <laughs> they're talent agents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think so, no. but all right. <laughs> well, we'll go ahead and close public comment at 824 p.m. Oh. And council, yes, we've got five items, which means we need five motions. Oh, we have a it looks combination. like just two, actually. Huh? Is it just two, Jim? Or do we got to do yeah, each individual? Yeah, they kind of broke it down differently for us this we time. We have... I'm not speaking loud because the town administrator's office has denied me access to... <laughs> Oh. oh! That was part of the yeah. budget. <laughs> we, we got Jim cutbacks. Guys. Jim gets no mic. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wow. You find the resolution. <laughs> I've got my voice up, all right? You just, just get that away from me, Cleveland. <laughs> Separate All right. All right. You oh, guys okay, so are you, lucky. Uh, lucky. I got it. All right. You All got right. it, Renee? Go. I move to approve resolution number 18.079, 18 18-080, 18-080, 18-081, 18-082 on second reading. Second. Motion by Renee and second by Debbie. Council, please vote. And that leaves one item. That would be ordinance number 1.520. I move to approve ordinance number 1.520 on second reading. Second. Motion by John and a second by Amy. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And with no further business before council, ladies and gentlemen, we're out of here, we're out of here before 8.30. Have a good evening. Bam.